So I just unscripted banter, unscripted banter. Uh-huh. Uh, how, <laughs> <laughs> any Ugh. hot goss? Hot goss. Um, you know what? I, hot complaint as we're getting into this episode. <laughs> okay. Hot complaint. Uh, and this is, you know, what's slowly happening to us. We are getting old, and I'm seeing the geriatric stuff happen in the world where we're like, "Why are kids like this <laughs> stage?" stage? Um, yo, I the the number of people that text while they're driving is <gasps> crazy to me. Yeah, I was on my, I was on one of those like city bikes, where we call them blue bikes here in Boston today. And I was like, yo, dude, he was like pulled up in the fucking intersection on his phone. And then I kept riding in the bike lane. And then I saw a a guy on his phone on the bike. I was like, sir, you are really, you are really cruising for a bruise in here. Oh my God. What what do they call that? Uh, You trying to win a Darwin award. That's... (laughs) Wait, you know, it, oh, survival of the fittest, Darwin? No, like, yeah, Darwin, yeah. Like, when, <laughs> when you do something really stupid and you end up dying, you win a Darwin <laughs> Award. <laughs> that is so, you didn't survive. Didn't yeah, survive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, I shout out to the iPhone because I love that when I get into the car, it turns the phone into car mode, uh-huh. meaning no text messages come up on the screen. Yes. And I have a little thing in my text message that says, Francesca is driving right yes. now. Yes. And then I'll get back to you. Because again, look, I, I've definitely been guilty of times I'm checking it. Like if I'm going somewhere and I need to make sure I know what's going on. Oh, the map on. all day. Listen, I, uh, the map I get. That makes yes, sense. No, yes, the map. But I'm saying that like if I'm headed somewhere and I and I don't know what the check-in situation is or I can't find a part, like I might look at my phone because sure. I need to text the person, yeah, my, my totally contact, whatever. Yeah. But again, it is to your point, really fucking dangerous. And I like that my phone does the automatic car so i'm not even tempted i don't even right. see it comes on as soon as i get in there it's a crazy pervasive issue i'm just seeing it left and right and again like you said not that i am above it right i've done it too so like right. uh, uh uh you know cat calling cat calling kettle <laughs> pot the calling cat. the kettle <laughs> the cat's cradle in the silver spoon <laughs> What? Not the cat doing the cat's cradle <laughs> next to a pot. The pot's like, what? Why, why am I in it? The pot's like, girl, you are in the wrong spot. <laughs> you need to go. Ooh, y'all are nasty. Why is the cat on the stove? <laughs> why is, let me, turn on the stove and burn this bitch. Get off. <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, listen, no. Uh, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I hate you for that. Uh, let me fix it. Welcome back to Let Me Fix It, the podcast that says, Round Robin, we're going round and round and round Robin. We're going round and round. Oh, good Did you just on. make this song up? <laughs> this is not a song. It's, I was trying to do Rock and Robin. Rock, rock tonight. Oh, rock and Robin. Okay. The face that you... The, 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 you <laughs> she's a vintage. Were like, I, I am a She's I'm a, a writer. I'm a writer of the Writers Guild of America. You better shut up, WG I'm a card car- car- <laughs> car- member. Oh, my God. I'm Francesca Ramsey. I'm an actress. I'm a writer, a producer, and a graphic designer. And I'm Delon Grant. I'm an actor, singer, photographer, writer, and an educator. And this week, we are back with one of our signature Round Robin episodes. So, class, you may remember this from last season. We do them very often. Instead of focusing on one brand, celebrity, or TV show, this week, Fran and I have each brought two topics, and we that are on our hearts at the moment. And as usual, we will each pitch our fix for these issues. The fun of these episodes is that we have not discussed our topics ahead of time. So we're tackling these. (laughs) The fun about these episodes is that we haven't discussed our (laughs) episode. The fun about (laughs) all of this days. Not All of like, it. <laughs> Glass. Delon opened his eyes wider as if that was going to help him get through. Okay. So I could see it better. <laughs> yes. As I was saying, the fun of these episodes, now that I can read, is we haven't discussed our topics ahead of time. So we're tackling these bad boys live, raw, and uh, cut. 
Okay, what? yeah, you and the constant sex jokes. You really can't help yourself, can you? You see, the reason I was stuttering is because Fran set my ass up with this <laughs> joke because she wrote this episode. <laughs> but you are right. I always have a sex joke. And there'll you be 10 do. more, I'm sure, before this episode is over. I, this is what a writer does, Dylan. <laughs> she has to embody her subject oh. and try to, you know, take the voice and, uh, what would you say, imbibe, imbibe Ooh. the voice. Do you know what imbibe means? Just means drink alcohol, right? Oh, drink. good job. Okay, no, I, was, I, I was coming for your ass. I, <laughs> Listen, I, re- I, <laughs> he is spicy today. He's spicy today. He really it's been is. a week. It's been but a week. But you know what? That's okay. It's gonna make for a great episode. So let's dive in. This is Let Me Fix It: Return of the Round Robin Games. <laughs> Uh, Delon, is it okay if I go first? Go ahead. Yeah, totally. Okay. So the thing that is really on my heart right now is the ethics of creating content that is inspired, quote unquote, by true events. Uh And the one that I'm thinking about right now is Mr. Ryan Murphy with his new Netflix series, Monster. Delon, have you been keeping up with the backlash around this series? I haven't been keeping up with the backlash, but I have been seeing like uh, the, the, the media everywhere like the pr is like yeah. everywhere um, well netflix it, money and ryan murphy right, money exactly, like you know exactly. but it, I, it, I haven't heard about this backlash though no so okay so the monster series is about the menendez brothers who famously killed their parents and there is and they are currently in prison this was in the 90s Mm. And there's been a lot of talk around the series because Ryan Murphy took some liberties with painting the boys as if they were in an incestuous relationship. With their which parents? Or the no, boys were? No, the, the oh. brothers. That is, that, is, that is completely fabricated. Wow. And then there's also the added layer of one of the reasons that the, the case was so highly publicized is like these wealthy, good-looking young men who right. killed their parents but there was also the added layer of they alleged that their father was sexually abusing them and, mm. they had, and that's why they killed their parents okay mm-hmm. and they had a number of family members come forward and say he was abusing them wow but in the 90s they alleged the 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 prosecutors suggested that you could not rape a boy they wow. yes and and so there was a lot of uh evidence that was not permissible in court despite the fact that they had multiple family members say oh yes he definitely was abusing them and also other victims outside of their family who've since come really? forward to say that his their father was raping them okay and so wow. now here comes ryan murphy and he makes this show where he's like were the brothers in love? Did they really get molested? Were they, wow. and like just kind of blurring the lines yeah. and just doing things for the sake of shock value. And what happened since not only did Lyle uh, and Eric Menendez, uh, Eric put out a statement about the, the, the show, but 24 members of the Menendez family issued a statement about the show in support of the brothers. Wow. Their family is saying, we do not agree with this show yeah. and we believe that like you know look it, and and in eric's statement he said along the lines of like you know what happened was terrible yeah. we are paying the pi- price for our crimes we, yeah you know but like <clears throat> this pervasive idea around can boys be sexually assaulted needs to change yeah. and sh- this show is damaging the conversation for actual victims of sexual assault. And when victims are not prioritized, this is what happens. They lash mm. out and do violent fucking things, right? It's the Aaron, uh, what's his name of it all? Hernandez? We're, we're, Aaron we're, Hernandez, yeah, yeah. He, again, not an excuse. Right, right. The crime is a crime. You, like, like Aaron Hernandez went to jail for murdering. Like the, yes. the Menendez brothers went to jail for murdering. But your point is, is really well taken, right? I don't, like, I'm sure that there are crazy people out there who are just child molesters or yes. are just commit sexual assault because they are mentally unwell but there are people i think a lot of people say that they become uh, yes. molesters because they were molested right that's what that is it's literally a cycle Cyclical. yeah it's literally yeah. a cycle and i just want to read some key statements from this um statement some key passages from this statement because this is a fucking statement this is a statement it really is it's it really three is. fucking paragraphs i'm not going to read the whole thing um but 
it does say it is sad for me to know that Netflix's dishonest portrayal of the tragedy surround surrounding our crime have taken the painful truth several steps backward, back through time to an era where the prosecution built a narrative on the belief system that males were not sexually abused and that males experienced rape trauma differently than women. Huh. Those awful lies have been disrupted and exposed by countless brave victims. This is this is from Eric's statement, P.S. Uh -huh. Okay, so like, again, he did the shit, but he is fucking bringing the heat right. in this right. statement. Well, he's also been in jail and been able to ponder the shit, right? Yes. Let's talk about that. And, and to his point, to see how the way we talk about sexual assault has changed since right. the 90s, okay? Right. As it should. So it goes on to say... Uh, it's been disrupted and exposed by countless brave victims over the last two decades who have broken through their personal shame and bravely spoken out. Okay. And then, oh, you know what? This is not the right one. There's one, there's one more that I wanted to rate, uh, members. It is. <clears throat> Cause there was a fucking bar. Hold on a second. Okay. Wait, let me just get to this thing. Sorry. Okay, here it is. Here it is. So that's from Eric's statement. And then this is from the family. So it says, the character assassination of Eric and Lyle, who are our nephews and cousins, under the guise of, quote, storytelling narrative is repulsive. We know these uh. men. We grew up with them since they were boys. We love them. And to this very day, we are close to them. We also know what went on, went on in their home and the unimaginably turbulent lives that they have endured. Several of us were eyewitnesses to many atrocities one should never have to bear witness to. Wow. It is sad that Ryan Murphy, Netflix, and all others involved in this series do not have an understanding of the impact of years of physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. Perhaps, after all, The Monsters is all about Ryan Murphy. Ooh, well, y'all better turn it on him. That was y'all better light, turn it like, on him. Okay, y'all trying to get a deal. Y'all should well, be writing. And you're gonna—I know you're gonna mention um, Ryan Murphy. He had a statement about yes, this, he sure right? Did. But, what, but what's really crazy to me is like uh, the rebuttal is fucked up because you named it monsters. Right. Like, and then I'm, and then I guess the argument could be like, who's the monster? Well, we're saying the parents are the monsters, like, or the, or the, the murder is the monster. And the poster has the brothers shirtless grabbing each other like they fucking. Uh, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's disgusting. Really... And so Ryan Murphy did respond in an interview with People magazine, and he says, I feel like that's faux outrage because look at what we do. We give those boys so much airtime to talk about their claim as their physical abuse. We sort of live in a culture of outrage, and a lot of things are needed jerk i'm used to being controversial this series is the best thing to happen to the menendez brothers in 30 years because that's, they're that's back the most in the disgusting part of it that's are the most disgusting fucking, part of it are you are you kidding me he's trying patting himself on the you're drinking back your own Kool -Aid. you're drinking your own kool-aid and you know what here, here let's jump to the fix really quick because i know this was yours but i have the yes fix. yes no, i mean i i yes go, my, go i just want to say like the, my my thing is like we, we had an episode on apologies, right? Mm -hmm. The move here in this scenario, even if you're not going to have some restitution, is just to say, you know what? I, I'm sorry that I'm sorry that uh, people were hurt by this. Mm -hmm. it, it, and like your intention doesn't matter, but just say, I'm sorry people were hurt by this. Yeah. That's the response. Like if you're going to go in People Magazine, don't defend it. You know what I mean? Don't defend it and then shit on the families. Oh, it's faux outreach. Those are their family members who are in jail and also their family members that were murdered and right. also their family members who were abusing those boys and looking the other way. There's levels of trauma there. And for him to go, oh, it's fake outrage. Like, no, it's real outrage. It's very much real outrage. And just, and I'm like, you know, again, I don't mean to say like, I'm sorry you felt that way, but like, and uh, like, having some humility around people's feelings i think i guess is well, my point well that is that right. is counterintuitive for ryan murphy because this is a pattern with him when it I mean, came to the dahmer film the dahmer series he did the same thing yeah. he sexualized J jeffrey dahmer and made him like this hot young actor people were thirsting over him and the families came forward afterwards the victims of his families and said this was inappropriate and yeah. ryan murphy's excuse was well i reached out to y'all and y'all didn't answer Nigga, that's the response. No response is the response. Talk if we, about it. if we said, it, like, 
I gave y'all a chance. They don't want, they're tired of the pain, the worst day in your life becoming a television show and people thirsting over the man that killed and ate your family members. Oof. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, the and Dahmer thing, the Dahmer thing is something I couldn't watch. And and I, I like, partially because all most of his victims were men of color, were gay men of color. And right. I, first of all, and so- And it was like ignored gay, because of that. Right. And that's how and he so, was able to get away with it. Right. And some of my gay, gay community were like, oh, God, did you watch it? I'm like, no, how could you watch it? No judgment. But how could you watch that? Right. Because it's also like I know we're talking about the, the Menendez brothers, but the Menendez brothers, the Dahmer thing. Didn't he also uh, do one on the guy who shot Johnny Versace? Like he that did. was one of his. So he's taking these crimes of these men and making them sexualized, making right. them desirable. And that's kind of a pervasive thing when we talk about killers serial killers we have yes. a crime obsession in this country right well i know you love a crime podcast girl yeah but we have and, an obsession and, with the, with the uh, and i'd say like a, a mo not morbid but like a weird obsession with well, crimes and murders yeah and let me let me add a caveat here i do like crime stuff but the crime stuff that i listen to is about miscarriages of justice historic crimes crimes where the victims and their families are 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 not here to be like we're being sensational or painted and you know uh, Lizzie Borden for example is a good uh. example or crimes that changed the way that we understand forensic for forensics for example like talking about the way that certain crimes have shaped our collective consciousness not like okay this next criminal is a hottie and like the way yeah. that crime is talked about on TikTok for example where people are fucking doing their makeup while recounting horrific details of murders right and so when it comes to the ryan murphy of it all he the the families of the Dahmer victims they have come forward with a lawyer to say like we should be getting money from this like yeah. the fact that you're able to profit off of again the worst day of our family's lives and we are just an afterthought is ridiculous and i'm of the mind that if it's not already inherent netflix is making a series cut a fucking check you can cut a check to those people Easy. and and or there needs to be in the same way that you've got inspired by true events or based in a, on a true story which p.s netflix is uh, uh subject to a lawsuit because of baby reindeer they just had a oh, true yeah, story at that. the top it just yeah. had a true story and then homegirl martha who is you know the the stalker and the the real life stalker has come forward and she's like nah y'all about to pay up because some of these details are not correct uh. netflix there should be some sort of disclaimer at the top that says the victim's families have not signed off on this account we have yeah. you know you know when you watch movies or I mean we we reached out and they said no comment it needs something yeah. like that and or like you know I, I mean i'm of the mind like stick to the original content because like that's Glee, American Horror Story, those are uh, those are things that have really worked for Ryan Murphy and built his built. You know, I'm not saying well, he I would can't argue do other it stories. Hasn't, it hasn't worked for him, which is why he's pivoting because the shit. Well, I think uh, no, I, I disagree. Like Glee was big when it was big. American Horror Story was big. Was, but he, uh, but he's, got, just he worn, he's just worn. He's just worn out. American Horror Story, and so he's going on to other. Which you do as a writer too. Like every right. every creative does that. Oh, totally. But I think like the the either include the families in the conversation and be like, how can we tell this story in a substantive way or, and listen to them when they say, we don't want to tell it. And, or like, this is the, the not so glamorous, not so cute part, do it and don't say anything. I mean, cause if you, if you're going to do it, then do it, I guess. But like, it's, you know, it is offensive. I mean, that's and what he's doing. I mean, he, yeah. he, he, he's doing that now. And, and, and that's why I'm saying that my fix is to your point, if you're going to do it, I think there needs to be a, 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 a full disclaimer that says we reached out to the families and they Perfect. chose not to participate so that we as the audience can have a real understanding that this might not be legit because just saying inspired by true events, it still leaves. And ultimately people are going to believe what they're going to believe. But I think the fact that the family has ha now had to make a statement after the fact, it gets buried. It, 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 it's, it's not top of mind. These shows are about the flashy actors and the plot twists and the da, da 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 da. It's not about the people who were actually hurt. And so that's why my fix is like in the same line of the inspired by true events. It's like, we reached out to them. They didn't want to be in it or you know, I just watched the Lacey Peterson doc. 
Her family's in the documentary. They uh, they agree to be in it because they want Lacey's story to be told. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, like include the because then you then you have a disclaimer, right? Then you have like, right. You know, we've actually contributed to. Uh, they they added their voice and or we consulted them in a way that give them that a producer episode. credit. Well, I don't know about that, girl. But uh, if it's your uh, if it's your life story, and we are going to then like pick your fucking brain about about the worst day of your life. Yes, you need to cut me some money. I mean, if you agree to that, but uh, yes, yeah, I disagree. I disagree. I don't think you have to give them a, a, a producer credit unless unless they want to put money down and produce it. Because yeah, producing produ- is about no, but producing is not always about money. And I will tell you that as somebody who is cutting checks to people that are producers on my projects and they have not put up any money. Sure. I mean, my, ma- my fix is like, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that anybody's giving nobody a producer credit for this, but, but her, I mean, her. I'm saying it tongue in cheek, but like if someone is, is offering substantive feedback to shape a story, like for example, my manager, my manager gives notes on a script. She but can she's ask your for- manager. That's yes, like your, yes, yes. that's your manager. Yes, she works I'm, for you, girl. Yes, I'm. I, I'm. I'm not saying that. No, she's... no, I hear, Fred. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I'm just saying that. Like some people can get. Per, there are all sorts of like what you call a non-writing producer on projects, and sometimes those non-writing producers get a certain amount of money, or sometimes it's just a producer in name, and it's just a um, a consultant fee. Pose is a great example. They had some trans people that were consultants on the show that didn't do any writing. They were just trans people that they consulted. And they were like, hey, does this look right? Does this sound right? And they got a a fee and they got a a credit for it. And I think we should be more willing to do that. I think especially in something where Ryan Murphy's going to make bajillions and get all these awards. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he should have been doing it anyway. I mean, that's that's the kind of nugget of it. Like, I think, like, get back to the the original content, right? Yeah. That, that works. And, and, or, you know, like do something that's referential, right? There's no, nothing. You can have somebody that's a cannibal. You can have somebody that mm. kills somebody, but like maybe don't, because you're already using the salaciousness, right? You're already using the PR because it's in the zeitgeist. And so to your point, he is leaning heavily on that. So, I mean, you know, I, I get, I, I'm not saying he shouldn't. I'm just saying it's doubtful that he would. I don't know. Yeah, no, he's, I mean, look, his work, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. He don't care. <laughs> right. All right, go for it, Delon. Um, so mine is, um, I think we need a really stream, we need to streamline and cut down the terms and conditions that we get on apps. Uh, uh, when we when we uh, no one's credit reading cards, that shit. <laughs> no one's reading that at all, and then you get caught up. So there was a story about um, an accident in an Uber. So mm. this New Jersey couple, they're in an Uber. It's raining, and the Uber driver runs a red light, and it's a really bad accident. Like oh, God. the wife, like had multiple broken bones. Um, they had to have two ambulances. They didn't like the. It was bad. It was very bad. I saw a, a picture of the car, and it's like T bone like smashed right yeah and so the couple was like hey we want to sue uber like i don't know where the legal liability lies in there like i'm sure the uber driver has has to bear some responsibility because he's Mm -hmm. the driver but uber's the company that that they made the transaction and the negotiation with right 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 but so they took it to court and then they didn't, they lost. And then they took it to a New Jersey appeals court. And then the appeals, the appeals court threw it out because they said, you clicked yes on the terms and conditions. And the terms and conditions says that you w- would not sue Uber in the, in this scenario. And now, no one anticipates the rub. being in that situation. Right. But here's the rub. So this woman signed up for Uber, Uber in 2015, like we all did, like way, way in the way back. And her daughter is the person that was using her Uber Eats. So her her daughter clicked yes on the new oh. terms and conditions. And so that's the argument. It's still thrown out, right? They, they have no ramification or uh, no rec- – uh, they get no restitution here unless in arbitration – they will talk to Uber about it and, and figure out what what um, the financial payout might be. Right. But when people do it like uh, in arbitration, they don't get as much money because they, because a jury can't hear it. Right. And right. Jur- the jury is the person that the uh, the group that says this is how much money you get for mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, for for the lawsuit. So, nor does Uber have to apologize, nor does it become public. So, I think what's happening is that this family... And it family, sounds like no changes get to happen. Like, then they no, don't have to make any changes. Which is, which is the point, right? Right. Which, well, which is part of the, uh, the the shadow of it all. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and the, the, I think by going... I think by putting this out in the news, they're trying to put pressure on Uber and trying to... So, I, I, 
here's my fix for it. I think we just need some, we either need a video to come with the oh. terms and conditions with bullet points. A because cliff some, notes. A, a cliff notes because some of that shit is legal ease. Have you ever, ever read the terms and conditions? No. On a contract? Listen, not to tell too much of my business, but we about to have a call about this very shortly because <laughs> I have signed some contracts and then later on I've been like, no, wait, wait, is this, is this right? And then to your point, you go back and read it and you're like, what the fuck does this what say? What does it say? Right? What does it say? It says it um, says it's 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 like a wall of text. It's a bunch yeah. of, you know, SAT words. We're not Ooh. all professors. Not all of us <laughs> are acquainted <laughs> with some of those words. You're so freaking right. The other thing that's really annoying about this is like, okay, let's say we do have the video terms and conditions. We do get the cliff notes. Does that mean you go, yeah, I'm not gonna click this, so I'm never gonna use Uber? Like that sucks. <laughs> I know. I mean, that's that's a really great point, right? Because a lot of a lot of times when I do click past that shit, it's when you're in the immediate of using it. You're like, I need it now. You're like, oh god, what is this? Fuck yes, let's I'm go. I'm going to the airport and I need Literally. my Uber. Literally. And then you read it and you go, well, damn. If I get in a car accident on the way to the airport, y'all ain't gonna pay for it. I need to go. Like, what recourse do you actually have? Are you gonna call a taxi? They're dead. <laughs> They've been, trying to sue, they've been trying to sue Uber for the past 20 years and Literally. ain't got nowhere. Literally. Wow. Yeah, that so is fucked I don't, up. I don't know what else to do because you make a really, your point is really well taken. What are you going to do? Are you not going to use the service? Are you not going to use that credit card that you want to get the points on? Are you, you know, not going to go to the doctor? Uh, yeah. <laughs> like you have to. You still need to do those things. But I guess it's like, oh, I know what I'm getting into now. Yeah, I guess so. Or like maybe there's a version where you can agree to some and not others. You know what I mean? Oh. Like, you know, like consent can be withdrawn at any time. You're like, you this know is what? very true. I'm not into this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pay me. <laughs> you're mid ride and you're like, I'll stop here. I'll walk the rest of the way. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, you know what, Don? I'm going to also say that that was a, se a sex joke. You stop oh. mid ride. Well, well. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you have to, though. Sometimes you're like, this is too much. Lit this is too much. Again. Or not enough, right? Uh, hello. <laughs> Consent can be withdrawn at any time. And withdrawal can be like, get out. Like, <laughs> exit the premises. We are done. <laughs> Ride oh. over. You must be this tall to ride the ride. There's still there's still no good way. Now, now I'm getting into the sex part of it. There's still no good way to end to end an encounter. No. Like it's invariably going to be just awkward and you have to embrace the awkward and run with it's it. It's gonna like, be yeah. awkward and also I'm not trying to die. This <gasps> motherfucker could try to kill me. Yo. So ending the encounter also sometimes means delicately <laughs> managing somebody else's ego i know because somebody suddenly thinks you're saying this about them or whatever and you know you got to be careful <laughs> yeah i mean listen it's a stranger in your house There's it's a that. stranger in my house i was gonna say go stranger out. in paradise but you would know Ooh, that song it's a, yeah. it's a musical theater song oh yes um, uh, so do you have a fix for this for, for the terms I, and conditions? I really like your idea of the, um, video, uh, explainer. I remember when I worked at Upworthy, whenever we would get emails that were like really in depth at the very top of the email, they would do a little summary that was TLDR too long, didn't read. Ooh. And they would tell you like what was in it. And similarly, I think for each little area of the terms and conditions, it's a big, they have to put the legal version for legal purposes. It has to be said a certain way, but then maybe there's a little cliff notes TLDR version where it's like, this is the part where if you throw up in the car, it's your job to pay for it. This is the part where you can get too many zero stars means that your account can get deleted. Yeah. You know, whatever it is, just explain it to me like I'm five. Yeah. Um, that part, because I think part of the legalese of it is to confuse you. This is why Google has 17 lawyers. This right. is why Apple has a bunch of lawyers. They have like a, a big team to figure out how to puzzle it, right? How to get right. by um, and how to, or how to create an argument. The thing that I've learned in my adult life about law, another tangent, forgive, is that it is, it is very much a practice. It mm -hmm. is very much, oh, you have an argument. How do you 
con convince somebody else, convince the jury that that is not right. Convince right. the jury that he killed he killed that person, but you know he only stabbed him twice. Mm -hmm. and he also had a heart condition. So right. was it the knife or right. was it his heart condition? Right. Right. I mean, like, that's crazy to me. Yeah, I mean, and to that same end, again, we're going on a little bit of a tangent here, but you listen to this show. You know what we do. <laughs> but the thing about that frustrates me about, like, the law and order crowd where they're always like, it's the law. You have to obey the law. Yes, and also, not every law is just. Right. Remember when y'all said we were three-fifths of a person? Right. That was the law. Slavery was written into law. There was a time where women couldn't have bank accounts. Like right. there are, the law is meant to be malleable. Uh, the law is malleable. Exactly. Very much so. The Constitution is a document where we have amendments. Exactly. We amend it for the times that 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 shift and change. So, um, but it also in the in the way the same way that it's malleable is I'm suspect of it. I'm like, oh, oh you could get me. You can I mean, get me listen, with, with a good argument. You can put my ass right in jail. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And again, uh, and maybe that's why I do listen to the fucking crime podcast because I'm trying to make sure I got all my I's dotted and T's crossed. <laughs> I, you just want to see how you might be murdered. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I mean, you're you're not that far off. But also, like, I will say every time I listen to those things. I think about the fact that, like, not that I'm somebody that wants to commit a crime, but I'm like, how in 2024 does anybody commit a crime knowing how much technology is out here to find your ass in the 60s and 70s? You know what I mean? You out here, like, pillaging, being fucking reckless as fuck. No one was going to find you. We ain't got no cell phones. We right. ain't got no closed circuit TV cameras, nothing. Now... Yo, I, listen, you said 60s and 70s. They're tracking, I mean, the statute of limitations, but they're tracking back and going, oh, we still got that DNA back there, girl. Oh, no, we're Judy, looking. Judy got that DNA. Bring that shit up here so we can open this case again. Oh, yes, there, yes, yes. No, I'm saying that if you No, committed, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, totally. yeah, yeah. That like, you know, again, and that's why the, the podcast that I've been listening to as of late is called Criminal. And they go through, like, there was an episode that was about how we got fingerprinting technology. And it was from like a really brutal murder where there was blood everywhere and they saw some of the blood. They were like, wait a second, that looks like a fingerprint. And then they started being like, maybe this is a way we can find who, like they had never, we weren't taking people's fingerprints. So like, you know, basically the idea of like, there were times in history where committing a crime was easier because we just didn't know how to catch your ass. Right. And now, we got everything to figure out who I did mean, it. The, to your point about the cell phones alone, the, a, a ping of a cell phone tower. People try to shut their cell phone off and then turn it back on. They have a burner phone. I'm like, yo, wherever that phone is, they can find your ass. Oh they my will God, find wait, you. Did, did you read any of the Eric Adams indictment? I was just going to bring up the Eric Adams thing. So, class, <laughs> if you are not up on this Eric Adams thing, Eric Adams is the mayor of New York. He is he's being charged. He's been indicted for multiple uh, um, bribery, bribery from other nations. And this man, the FBI showed up. He was going somewhere. The FBI showed up to to take his cell phones and his his work phone. They could take, but he had left his his actual personal phone. He said mm -hmm. at home. He, he said, I'll bring it to you later. He brought it he to the later. He changed the password. And then he was like, he told the FBI, oh, I forgot the password. I just changed it. <laughs> you are, right. This... You think we're stupid? You changed it so you wouldn't have to let us into it, you and, idiot. And sir, do you think we don't, we, we can't get into this phone? You think, you think we, we can't, can't figure it out? call Apple right now and go boop, boop, we do? Literally. But also there were so many texts where like his uh, administrative person would be would say like, OK, hey, tur the Turkish person is sending you a flight. Da, 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 da. And then Eric Adams would be like, now make sure to delete this this correspondence. <laughs> Sir, so we have the deleted messages of you saying delete the messages. Nothing goes away on the Internet. <laughs> Uh, uh, the, the the it goes into outer space, but some some fucking uh, it's in the I don't cloud. Know, hard drive has it stored. I mm. promise, Apple can find that shit. Mm -hmm. It's in the cloud. There is a cloud, right. and it's got all them text messages. Right. All right. So, what's your next one, Fran? Okay, my next one is about ageism, and it's really interesting because. Oftentimes when we talk about ageism, we are talking about the way that elderly people are mistreated or, you know, taken advantage of like elder abuse or, you know, oh, you're so old, you don't know this thing, whatever. 
I've been having a very different experience as I'm now 40, where people think I'm younger, so they mm. fucking talk down to me. And I have oh. this happen online, but also in the workplace a number of times. And it's been happening so much recently that I am truly at a place where, I mean, again, I, I've been at my wits end with the internet for a while now, but what often happens to me as of late is I will be reflecting on the ways the internet has changed over the last 20 years because I started video blogging in 2006. I had a website in 1998. Like everything is different. Cell phones, mm. video phones, like internet speeds, social media, all these things. So often, Delon, I will talk about this on the internet and people will go, you don't know what you're talking about. What are you, like 20? And I'm like, I mean, thanks, but no, I'm 40 and I know what I'm talking about. Mm. And even if I was 20, like a 20-year-old can't have thoughts about a time before they actually existed or technology that they've used. They can't have done research on these things. Like mm. it's just, it's so mind-blowing to me. And I'll also add, it's usually white people. Well. And you, you, you tell it on yourself. Because, like, I, I know I look young. I know I got some embryonic fluid in my eyes. -uh. You know, I look like I'm fresh from the womb. Mm -mm. I still got a, a placenta perm. You know what I mean? I mean, well, she, girl, class, <laughs> she has this finger wave going. She thinks she's cute. <laughs> I do feel cute. You're very um, cute. Thank you. But here's the thing. I, I'm just of the mind, again... That even if I was younger than I than I appear to be, and I, Delon, this has happened to be on set. I don't know if I told you I was on set, and one of the producers said to me, "You ever been on set before?" Uh huh. And I was like, ha "Literally, I'm working on another. I was working on two TV shows at the same time." And I was like, "How old do you, do you think I'm? Just like now, fresh you, out of college?" I mean, I, I hear you on it being white people and it probably being a racial thing, but also and a misogynist thing, right? Yes. I, misogyny, I'm sure, has has something to do with it. But I'm. Um, do you think? I think it's also like a power thing. Oh yes. You know what I mean? Oh it's yes. Like they're putting you in a place where they can because you are speaking with such authority, especially on the internet. Right. Mm -hmm. Talk about <laughs> outrage. Uh, in the internet is just outrage nonstop. Like, mm -hmm. what can I say? That, you're making a statement about a thing and I have to have an opinion about the thing that you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's a way to cut you down and put you in a place and make themselves fill their own cup up, you yes. know? One, yes, 1,000%. It also is like a, a constant reminder for me online that like we are sharing space with people from all different kinds of like backgrounds and experiences and oftentimes people forget that there are some people on the internet that know what they're talking about like there's mm. a lot of people that are like i'm gonna give you my fan theory on this movie and they've like never worked in tv they've never do you know what i mean where they're yeah, like totally. i'm gonna hypothesize on a thing and it's just totally off the dome versus sometimes <laughs> people are I see this happen all the time online where a scientist will be talking about the pandemic and someone will say, that's not how it works. And they're like, I'm literally a scientist. I <laughs> literally know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and so well, and th this is like the really shitty thing about democratizing the uh, d democratizing things. Right. Everyone has voice and everyone is an expert. Right. Right. Uh, was that was that <laughs> that other podcast armchair expert, which mm -hmm. I love that phrase and that idea. Right. It's a great title. Yeah, because everyone everyone has an opinion and everyone thinks that they're right, you know? Yeah, and I just wish, like... Self-included. <laughs> right, and, and here's the thing. Like, I think what I love about our podcast and, and the, the perspective that we bring to these topics is we are like, hey, I'm a writer, I'm a producer, I'm an educator, I'm a designer. Like, we have some experience here. We are giving our opinion, but it's also based on years worth of experience and degrees and knowledge and all those things. Right. And so I think my fix would be, I would love it if before you could reply to someone online, for example, that it's almost like a little cliff notes of who the person is. Cause oh. I have this happen all of the time where people will be like, well, this is how, this is how Instagram works. And I'm like, I know how Instagram works. I literally have been here for all of this time. I wish they could just push a button that's like, this content creator started in da, da 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 like just a little background info, almost like a business card or something. Mm, if that mm. makes sense, I don't and know I how it would work in real life, but like, man, it's just 
Well, and I, I, I hear you on like, this is very much an opinion show based in our own experience, right? right. Like there, um, and that's not to say that like opinion doesn't matter, right? right. It's it, like, yeah, everyone has an opinion and you're, you're entitled to that. Um, and some people want to hear it and some other people, some people don't, you know? Um, but, but to your point uh, about the fix, I can, I, I can almost hear you respond to these people. Not only <laughs> like, I, I already know that you, you, you have to tout your resume. You have to be like, well, I'm actually this, I'm actually that, I'm actually that. Yeah. Because you want them not only to introduce them to yourself, but you want them to be like, no, we're on even playing field. Like, don't belittle me. Yes. Don't put me in a box, you mm -hmm. know? Um, so I, I, I want to give you cookies there because I really do think, I'm sure that's what you do. I'm sure that's how you yeah, respond. Yeah, I mean, I, I pick and choose. It just depends on, like, if it's worth it or not. And I think that, unfortunately, in real life, too, that's – those are the concessions we all have to make. That's something you and I talk about all the time where it's like someone says something to you that's racist or homophobic or sexist or whatever. And you have to do the math in your head of like, is, is this worth the like energy, going the, the fuck off on this person? Can I do this in an artful way where I'm going to keep my job? Like, do I just need to get this off my chest? Like, what's the goal here? Yeah. And I, I do that all the time. And also I'm at a place where – if I'm going to do it, I'm going to make some content out of it. Because yeah. I'd rather get a check. I'd rather tell you to shut the fuck up and also make some money <laughs> uh. than to, like, give you my time and energy. And then I'm like, why did I do that? Or I just block you. Or I, like, you know, make a piece of content and say, hey, this is something I've experienced. And yeah. other people go, oh, me too. And I feel a little bit better, you know? Yeah. And I think, too, like, uh, you said this on um, another podcast, but I think a, a, a good fix or a good spin around would be to ask them, why would you think that? To answer the question, <laughs> why would you think that about me? What gives you that yeah. impression? Yeah. Uh, and, like, be, like, a little, you know, a, a little passive aggressive about it. Oh, it's right? very and, passive aggressive. And put, it, put it back on them. Why would you think that? No, no, I have had experience, but no, I'm actually, I actually want an answer. Why would you think that about me? What oh, gives yeah. you that? And put them in a box, pack, pack them in the corner and be like, that was a dumb question. Thank you very much. You know? Oh, yeah, no, that's that. My, my response has been in that same vein. Usually most recently where I was having a conversation about work experience and the idea that like 10 years of work experience is a decent amount. And the person I was talking to said 10 years. No, it's not. I guess I'm just too old for this conversation. And I said, I, I don't know what age has to do with this, but I'm 40. So I think that that should give me enough uh, credence to say 10 years is a long time to be in a profession. It's nothing to scoff at. It's not 50 years. Right. And then the response was, okay, you got me there because I did think you were younger. And I was like, yeah, bitch, I'll, I'll flex a little bit. I'm 40. So now am I old enough to have this conversation? That is just so weird. It's also like a really weird trump card to try to cut you down, to tr cut you down out of yes. the argument. That's what it is. It's control. Again, it's Ill control and power. Yes, absolutely. So uh, a little cliff notes of your bio on social media, I think could be a great way. Just uh, check the bio, bitch. Mm. I mean, <laughs> right. Just or, and or just screenshot the bio. Like you, you put up some, you like have a little thing of your bullet points of who you are. And the next time somebody says to that, you can be like, read this, please. Just <laughs> read hold this. it up. Right? Google me, bitch. Google me, um, bitch. All right, Dawn, what's your last round robin topic? So my last one, I've, I mentioned this in round robins before, but I'm, I'm having, I have a little empathetic spin on it. So mm. customer service. Yes. Uh, so I was at the RMV today, which which is the Massachusetts version of the DMV for the rest of the country. The, Why is it uh, R? What's the R? I think it's um, the, uh, I don't know, the regular motor vehicle, the, <laughs> okay. the, the uh, registered motor vehicle. That's oh, what okay. Because, you know, they deal with like titles of cars. And I think the DMV does this too, but it's like a well, way to be different. Right? I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, so I, I, I'm always just so amazed at, um, the lack of, of urgency, mm -hmm. the lack of attention. Like I, this one guy uh, at the first, the first window, I sat there for so long, just waiting for him. He was just sitting there waiting for it to be nine o'clock before he said, okay, come over. I was like, you can't say a word to me. Wow. Then I finally got a woman. She was very, very sweet, very, very helpful. But she was so interested in cackling with her her coworkers. Mm -hmm. She was like, John, John, you oh, you go home. On, what time did you get home last night? He was like, oh, 6 05. I heard the entire day yesterday, <laughs> and she had not clicked the computer yet. And then she goes, What number? I was like, bitch, I've been sitting here for a whole two minutes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I am really impatient. So I'll give her that. So I say all this to say, 
I think customers, I don't know how much these people are paid, but we need to pay them more. Yes. Because I think if we paid them more, yes. if we paid the, the DMV people more, the TSA people more, uh, uh, you know, in, insert your government uh, um, agency that has a, a salaried job. Maybe they should be salaried and they don't. Maybe they're right. hourly, right? Yeah. If we paid these people more, I think they probably would want to be there more. Because um, uh, like I said this before, I did not you know, ask you to be at the DMV. I did not ask you to work at this Starbucks. Mm -hmm. I just but want my coffee. they got to pay bills. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just want my coffee and I just want my license. But I think like we, if we had more of a livable, livable wage for folks, like they might be excited to be at fucking work. Okay, Delon, this is so interesting because this exact conversation is currently happening and going viral on TikTok. Oh, really? And yes. And I know you're not super on TikTok, but one of my mutuals kind of kicked this off by saying nobody says hi anymore when you go into the grocery store nobody says hi and and this is you know community and and we need to you know care for each other and create third spaces and da, 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 da. and it started this whole conversation and to your point about the empathetic part of it it came down to y'all are asking people who make minimum wage below minimum wage to give you a fucking song and dance Ooh. while you treat them like below human in the midst of a pandemic in right. the midst of inflation and people have to stand on their feet they're not allowed to be in a chair i right. mean they are dealing with the general public who are often screaming at terrible. them who are terrible who who are stealing and putting their lives at risk and all of it yes. exactly and then it's like well that person didn't say hi to me and it's like you don't know what they're fucking dealing with and so i think you're really spot on to say we can hold space for two things that you as the customer you have places to be and shit to do right. but also if it was incentivized to give the customer a better experience they would do it and when we talked about this before i remember that my fix was some sort of like when you give feedback um oh yeah you know, like it, a little smile thing we when you did the smile or the five thing. or whatever at the end of the month if we got you know higher customer service ratings there is some sort of um prize bonus, or bonus, whatever. bonus extra time off you know yeah. whatever like i feel like companies they always want to be like here's a pizza party no bitch give me some money like not forced fun not forced fun with your coworkers. nobody wants that they nobody love likes that. they love doing that and it's like no give me more time off give me a yes. longer lunch give me a longer lunch break give me an extra day we're gonna close the office early one day when i was at the Chamber of Commerce, I remember we closed the office one day and uh, the president, Wendy, took us to the spa. It was wow. amazing. And like, wow. it really helped morale. And like, think about how your employees will show up. You know, it's not enough to just say, good job. If I knew that if the employee of the month title came with some fucking extra funds, everybody in this bitch would be fighting to be the employee. Better, of I don't want to keep your damn plaque. Oh, you that's better you keep get. it. That's no, what you, you get. better. You better keep that damn plaque. I want, like you said, a day off or some cash. I, you know that that, that makes sense. the other thing about morale. I just want to pull that thread. Like, if you, we've talked about this, I think, in the context of this conversation as well. If you want me to have stake in the company, give me stake in the company. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm not, I, you know. We're not, we're not talking C-suite people, like corporate people who are presidents and managers. I'm talking about the the people who um, at Starbucks who unionized, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they were asking for. Mm -hmm. They were asking for collective bargaining. That's a chip, you know? That's something they can give me. Um, because, like, I – the other thing is this is a transaction. Mm -hmm. You realize, like, I am only here for money. I'm only going to this pop. You this say that every they day. get mad. They're like, "We're a family, bitch." No, we're not a family. <laughs> we're not a family. You know, if I were, if we were a family, you would give me more money. Well, if, and also some people in my family I don't fuck with. So, well, like, sure, sure. <laughs> but um, you, to your point about the morale and like having a buy-in. I will say, I think that's one of the reasons, no matter where you are in the country, you're at a Trader Joe's. Those motherfuckers are smiling in Happy. your face. Happy. They are showing them Because Trader teeth. Joe's will pay for your education. They will give you a free education. Um, they, they give you not only health care and all that mm -hmm. stuff, right? Even when you're part-time, right? Yep. Even when you're part-time. 
Um, but like there's upward mobility and there's also stock in the company, which you eventually can get. It makes like, a difference and you about. feel it as the customer. You really do. You really, really do. And you know what else they do? Because I dated somebody that was manager of Trader Joe's. Um, at the end of the night, uh, their produce, because they make sure it's fresh. I think it's at the end of the night or maybe after a few days, they take all of the produce that is no longer viable and they put it out and they give it give it away to shelters now it's Amazing. not that it's not it's not like uh yeah. expired or anything it's like oh no we're actually gonna pay it forward yeah right? so that you the customer always have fresh stuff and we're also taking that and that's i'm, I'm sure they get a tax write-off for that but like that's paying it forward that yeah. also helps morale because you you can also say with pride oh no i work for a company that does good yeah, for, for our my community, for our city, that's also something that makes you go, yeah, I fucking like working here. Yeah, I'm gonna work forty hours plus. You know? Yeah, and it's so sad that that's not the norm because so many places, whether it's fucking Krispy Kremes or TGI Fridays, they throw out so much food. I know. They throw out so much stuff, or even like clothing stores, like they will throw away clothes and they will literally cut the clothes up before they throw them in the we dumpster. Talked about this because they don't want homeless people or anybody else or resellers to get a hold of it. And it's just like, man, to your earlier point about people want to spend their time at a place where they know like, you know what, I have to work a job, but if I'm gonna work a job, at least I work at a company that treats us right. It right. gives back to the community. I think you're spot on. We need to pay people more and it will make them nicer to the customers well and you know this is like i know that this kind of veers toward like people want to say this is socialist talk that's just communism no it's actually just equity <laughs> you know what i mean it's actually just equity i'm not yeah. saying that you can't have your your home in italy and your home wherever and your yacht or whatever if you're a corporate person i'm just saying could you have one less home and maybe disperse that among your employees like Lit that's all we're saying Literally, you're not even in the home year fucking round. That part. That you don't part. even, you can't even drive two yachts at the same time. You know, it's yes. just at some point yes. you're just collecting these things to say that you have the things well, while your employees who helped you fucking get them are scraping by. Literally, literally. You didn't do a goddamn, you didn't stock a shelf, you didn't write a thing, you didn't do anything. You sat on a Zoom in a meeting in an office somewhere and then you get to fucking push some numbers around while, you know, regular people are building the brands and the blood, sweat, and tears. Shout out to the fucking, the doc guys who are, are uh, oh, on yeah, strike. Oh, yeah, currently on strike. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, way to go. Way to go. And, and the, the thing that they're saying with that on the news is like, oh, well, Christmas might be a little late this year. I'm like, yo, really? Okay. Then, give them, what you, then give them what they fucking want so it exactly. won't be late. Well, because and what's guess crazy what? Oh, What's crazy about these strikes too, though, is that you know I I, I don't know the details of this doc docker strike, dock worker strike, but there would be like ten years, fifteen, twenty years well, they where they haven't, haven't had a raise, and y'all are being mad because because you're like, yo, no, we we waited this long, now we really want some shit, we really want some numbers. Oh yeah, no, it's been a really long time, and I was gonna say when you, when you mentioned the news saying, oh, Christmas might be late this year, what the thread I wanted to pull on, but guess what? It's on time every fucking year, and yeah. they are the ones who make sure it's on time. They are the ones who are there so that you can get your Amazon package right. the next day, you know, and they are literally doing some really dangerous work. Okay. Like it's, it's almost more dangerous, if not as dangerous than being a fucking firefighter and a police officer shit can fall on you. You know, they're using heavy machinery mm. They're at all hours, rain, shine sleet it can be raining out there and they're moving those big ass boxes give them you know what? what they ask for you know what they're santa they are fucking santa when you think about it because they we, are we really didn't know before this strike were you ever thinking about a dock worker i would sometimes see those big like uh carts that they the put shipping on like, containers ship, the shipping yeah. containers that they put on ships and i would just be like oh there's a shipping container but you know there are people that move those and machines that they have to operate to your point yeah. they're yeah. santa claus Merry Christmas. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Good one. Oh, and now it's time for everyone's favorite segment, the glow up, where we give props to those who turn themselves around without our help. But first, let's take a quick break. And we're back. Fran, do you mind if I go first? Please go first because I don't have a glow up. Ooh. Oh, you're a glow up. Your Thank finger you. waves are a glow Thank up. Thank you. So my glow up goes to... Um, <sighs> 
internet Wi-Fi on on airplanes, right? Oh, so yes. I know you're you're a um, uh, what, what's Blue. your airline? Thank Jet you. Blue. Let me start this again. So my glow up goes to Wi-Fi on airlines. I know you're a JetBlue girly, and mm-hmm. that's why. You, well, JetBlue points, but also like the Wi-Fi is good. Or oh, sometimes because I, I the Wi-Fi I, is free and good. I've flown JetBlue sometimes, and I'm like, where's the Wi-Fi? Where's the Wi-Fi? I mean, sometimes you get on the plane, and they're like, sorry guys, the Wi-Fi is not working today. Right. But versus when you're on like Delta, you have to pay for it. Or oh, um, well, not a few. Oh, Delta not Sky Miles member. Exactly. Yeah, well, I'm not one of those. <laughs> Uh, but you're a JetBlue member, and you have a JetBlue credit card, so it's the same difference, right? No, 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 no. JetBlue oh, is just free. free. It's free for everybody, I see, and I do I not see. have a JetBlue credit card. I just have um, I have a the frequent flyer JetBlue because I've just I been see. flying it I for see. so long. I'm just very elitist. I am a Delta <laughs> SkyMiles member, but I found out that um, they are trying to increase like the consistency of Wi-Fi mm. on airplanes. Um, I, I not only is I know JetBlue has it, Delta has it, but Delta's kind of can be hit or miss sometimes too uh, and especially if you're like going like over a wall the atlantic ocean like right there are no towers it's hard to find a tower yeah so what they're actually doing is <clears throat> elon musk his company spacex has a um an affiliate company called starlink which is an internet company and starlink has used our tax dollars uh <laughs> via nasa to put all of these um satellites that are in low orbit around the planet and he has a ton of them. Mm. So he has his own internet. Starlink has its uh, its own internet service that it provides. You know, you can sign up today if you wanted to. Um, but Delta and United, I think Delta is about to spend $1 billion. Wow. United is, is lop, uh, jumping on to, uh, to use Starlink's satellites instead of towers while they're flying over. So eventually, hopefully the internet will be free. On, yeah. on airlines other than JetBlue, um, but also it'll make it more consistent. And I was like, yeah. oh, you know, I don't want to give Elon Musk no credit. But well, he's not this, doing the. He's not p- crunching the numbers. <laughs> I mean, right as we just talked about, right? It's other people sending NASA, NASA right. sending them, <laughs> that shit up there. Literal astronauts are doing it. <laughs> right, right. Um, I'm not. You know, I speak. I know SpaceX is its own thing, but my point is, he used like NASA's technology of space Correct. travel to create SpaceX. So it's it is our tax dollars. Um, but I just thought that was a nice blow up. I was like, okay, th- I'm excited for that. Let's give me some free internet um, and, uh, uh, and make it consistent and regular. One woman I did hear say today, she was like, does that mean people are going to be having phone conversations on the airline? Because, you know, I, I, when we, you and I go to the quiet car when we take the train, right? Yes, when we take yes. Amtrak, I'm in the quiet car because I want to hear your shit. Can you imagine on like a six hour flight, someone just yapping yeah, on the no, phone I the mean, whole time? I, you definitely, Ugh. they still need to have rules about that type of stuff. But, you know, it makes me think of like, not to be morbid, not to be in my Delon era, but it makes me think uh, of like 9-11 when people are like, I want to be able to call my family members. Some shit's going down on the plane. You God, know what I mean? Man. Like Those or, messages oh, of like ex- saying I love you for the last time. Like Jesus Exactly. Christ. Exactly. So having the ability, you know, I, I always think about this. Um, when you go to theaters now, they're doing the thing where they put your phone in a pouch. Yeah. And yeah. so you can't record the show, which I think is smart. But honestly, the morbid part of me is like, what if a fucking shooter comes up in here and I can't, you know what I mean? Oh, have my yeah. phone to call 911 or like, you know, film the fucking perpetrator. So we have some evidence. My shit's in a bag. Like, unfortunately, that's where my mind goes. I hear you. Uh, I, I, will, I will say, yeah. I will say, um, they, we actually, having worked in a theater, especially the big Broadway theaters, we are trained for active shooters. I mean, it doesn't mean it won't God. happen, right, but right. there are, um, metal detectors out, yeah. out, you know, and, and, but I hear, I hear your anxiety around it, right? Yeah, yeah, Cause yeah. like your phone, your phone is also like, it, it, it feels like. I have access to X, fill in the mm-hmm. blank. And yeah. without that, like today in class, <laughs> my students, I was like, um, so I'm, I'm really uh, getting serious about these phones. Everyone's phones away, no phones in class. And I was like, tell me why that's important. And they were like, well, we, we want you to be here. And I was like, yeah, you're paying, I won't say how much, I was like, you're paying this much, this I'll much s- thousands of dollars to Delon, be here, let's be that, here. Tell me why that's important is, uh, that's a bar. Oh, that is listen, a- I, every every day I, I literally say, tell me what skills we learned last class. Because that that's you need to know that. We're not just here going through the motions. No, Del- you need to tell me what we're learning. 
Ooh, Professor Grant is fucking sexy. Ooh, Yo, the basement like, flooded. Wait a I, minute. The pussy jumped. <laughs> That, that's a glow up. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. Now she doing a two step. <laughs> Class, no, oh, she is, the neck is <laughs> the neck is bobbing and weaving. That's so Tell funny. Tell me why that's important. That is what did you did you come up with that or did some did did I you couldn't. hear a teacher say that? No, wow. no. Well, because I didn't well, I do I did say like I'm not doing this to be a jerk. I'm not doing this right. to be an asshole. Yes. I'm 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 literally saying like there's an attention that we need to pay here, even when someone is up there kind of because, ne- you know, uh, they're negotiating something with the, the accompanist that who also teaches the class and there. So it's like a little bit of downtime. I would rather us have a discussion about something while they're working that out until that singer is right. going to get up and perform. Then you leave this space to be yeah. your problem. Yeah. And I also said I was like, <laughs> not for nothing, but I also see y'all taking them phones to the bathroom. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see you. We digress. We digress. But no, I uh, I really really like. It. I'm gonna share that with Shamika because you know she's she's teaching and mm-hmm. she has to have the conversations with the kids about the phones. And I think the tell me why that's important. Again, great fix on your part. Helping them connect the dots of I'm not just being a dick to you. Yeah, I'm giving you what you are paying for. And guess what? You will be paying for this. Listen, I and that's friend. That's also what I said. I said. Because I went to grad school where I teach. And so I said, I'm still paying it off currently. And their eyes got so big. I said, yeah. Hello. Uh-huh. Hello. Uh-huh. Not uh-huh. me. Not me. Can't relate. See, Can't relate. yo. <laughs> class, I can't stand this home. And these student loans. I'm going to say it real quiet to you. Oh, my gosh. Well, class, that brings us to the end of this week's episode. And now we want to hear from you. What is something that you think needs to be taken care of in your personal life? We're trying to do a fix the class yeah, episode. You, yeah, what what floods your basement? Ready? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're using it wrong because a flooded basement is actually a good thing when I talk about my basement being No, but flooded. I'm saying, yeah, what what turns you on? What floods your basement? Yeah, but if we're fixing something, we don't want to know what's turning them on. We want we want to know see. something that's, you know. Welcome to the podcast. Well, yeah, well, 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 <laughs> What's what what dries your basement? What scorches <laughs> your nethers, really? <laughs> let us know. You can hit us up on Instagram at fixitpod or email us let me fix it pod at gmail.com. And you know we have a YouTube channel. It is flooded. <laughs> it is raw. It is there's no editing, but you get our faces, you get all of the messes and, and everything. You get the whole pod. Um you can find that at youtube.com backslash at fixit pod. And if you like this episode, friends, please be sure to rate us on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, or your favorite podcast app. I'm Delon. And I'm Francesca. And this was Love Fix It. <laughs> Good job.